The EP8 motor is the latest offering from Shimano and it goes about its business fairly quietly on the trails powering you along. But now and again, it's a good idea to give that motor and the motor area a bit of a clean and a refresh to stop any potential problems occurring. And today, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to do it. Now the tools that you need for this job will largely depend on the type of cranks that you've got fitted to your bike. The tool list I'm about to give you will remove most of those cranks, but you need to look into this to make sure you've definitely got the right tools to remove that chain set. So you will need a variety of Allen and Torx keys, contact cleaner, dielectric grease, Shimano crank tool or park tool BBT9, Shimano EW300 tool, some assembly grease, Shimano Tool FC39 or the Park LRT2, and lastly, a torque wrench. Right, let's get started. Although today's video is mainly aimed at the EP8 motor, this information is also applicable to the older E8000 motor if you've got one of those fitted to your bike. So first up, I'm gonna make sure the power is definitely switched off on my bike and remove the battery out of the bike. Again, it's just gonna remove that chance of the system switching on and uh, trapping your fingers in the chain. And the work stand is gonna make this job a lot easier, uh, but if you are working on your bike on the ground, just make sure your bike isn't gonna fall over because you definitely don't want that happening. Okay, time to get on the tools. And firstly, you're gonna need to remove the chain from the front chain ring. So we're gonna start off by removing the chain guide off of its mount. And then we're gonna get some slack in the system from the rear mech. So starting at the front, just undo your chain guide. That's if you've got one, that is. Just remove this out of the way. So you've got that outer off of there. And then on the rear mech, if you've got a Shimano system, you just wanna flick the lever on the rear mech to that off position. That way the mech's gonna allow you some tension in it to actually remove it out of the way. Or if you've got a SRAM rear mech, you've actually got a padlock on there. So you move the bottom cage, pull it tight, push the padlock button in, and that will hold the rear mech and remove the tension out of the system. Right, this is where it tends to get a little bit messy now, so I'm just gonna put some uh, gloves on to protect my hands uh, from all that grime and protect them a little bit too. So we're just gonna remove the chain out of the way off of the front chain ring. So we've got that tension removed, so it's nice and slack. Just pull that mech uh, cage forward and loop that uh, chain off of the chain ring. Right, that's nicely out of the way. Next, we're gonna remove this drive side crank. So this is where the difference in the tools lie when it comes to removing the cranks from your bike. On this bike, I've got Husqvarna cranks on there already. If I was to have the Shimano system, um, I'd actually need this tool combined with a five mil. But for this one, it's just a five mil preload cap and two five mil bolts to actually remove this crank off of the shaft. All right, I'll just undo this. With all that out of the way, it's time to remove the cranks. And before you get too excited about removing cranks from your bike, you need to keep the non-drive side crank on until you remove the spider and that chain ring out of the way. So this drive side crank, it's all undone. Just give it a little wiggle. It might be a little bit tight on the, uh, on the spines, but it should just pull off of there nice and easy as that. Next step is to remove the lock ring off the spider. Now, if you're working on your bike in a work stand, you're gonna need to drop it onto the floor because if you notice that when I put the tool on to the lock ring, now this is a left-hand thread, I'm undoing it and the motor is just spinning. Even if I oppose it with a left-hand crank, I still can't undo it. So we're gonna need to put the bike on the floor, put the chain back onto the chain ring and whilst the bike is on the floor, once you've got your weight of you on your bike and undoing that tool, that lock ring will come undone nice and easily. Right, so I'm gonna put the tool onto the lock ring and now you just need to put possibly your shoulder onto the seat. Just compress the uh, suspension a little because this, when you undo this, a motor is gonna wanna try and pull you around. So there you go, just easy as that. Let's loosen and then you can just spin that lock ring off with the tool wants us out of the way. Right, we've got the lock ring removed and the bike back in the work stand. Next, we're just gonna remove that chain off of the chain ring yet again. Won't be needing that. Then we're just gonna pull the spider off of the uh, motor housing itself. So again, give that a quick wiggle, pull it, 
and it should come off nice and easy. Then just give it a bit of a clean, bit of degrease and inspection, look at for you know wear on the chain ring. Okay, that's all the drive side components removed. So let's flip this bike around and get cracking on the non-drive side. Exactly the same to remove this non-drive side crank as the drive side. So just undoing these two five mil bolts. Again, depending on your crank, make a mod that will vary. Uh, and just remove this preload cap out of the end of the crank as well. Just spin that out. That removes. Just give that a quick wiggle. Might need a little bit of persuasion sometimes. And there we go, and she's off of there. So I just wanted to mention that there's no actual point of removing the motor from the bike. You're not gonna be able to access any more components than you can currently. But if you do desire to remove it, there's these big torque bolts here here and here, three different ones. Just make sure they're talked back up to the manufacturer's specifications when it comes to putting that motor back in. But the actual removal of it is quite tricky and you can end up damaging wires and crushing things as you put it back into place. So I suggest the way that we are doing it is probably gonna be the easiest. Right, so we've got the chain set and the cranks out of the way. Time to inspect the electrics on the motor. Now they're hidden away behind this little plastic motor and the way that it fixes will vary too. Some bikes are gonna have a T10 Torx cap on it or it could be a small Phillips screw on this bike. It's actually the Phillips option. So I'm just gonna put this in and remove these little uh, bolts out of the way. They are very small, so just take care that they don't drop out when you remove them because they can be a nightmare to find. So just loosening all three of these off. Right, so you can see how small they are, so it's time to remove the cover. Now usually there's a little tab that locates, so just give it a little wiggle, pull down, it should slide out, then it's going to expose all the electrics of your bike. Now a great tip when you are taking these things apart is to take photos with it on your phone. That way if you're not too sure about where a wire went or where it goes or the routing of it, you've got photographic evidence and you can go back to that and check you've done it the right way. And one thing I want to mention when you do remove that plastic cover is that you do notice some other Torx bolts holding the motor together. You do not want to be removing these metal casings out of the, uh, off of the motor because you will invalidate your warranty. Then just give a quick inspection of the wires that are coming into here. You've got the speed sensor wire, you've got your display wire, and you've got that main connection from your battery to the motor. So just make sure these are in good order and they're nice and clean. If they do look good, then I wouldn't really go interfering with them too much. But if they are a bit dusty or a bit muddy, or maybe there's some water in there, then it's time just to get in there and give them a bit of a clean. Okay, so we're just gonna do a quick inspection of the connections from the display and that speed sensor area. And if you are removing the wires from uh, the motor, you actually need a special tool called the EW300 tool. So this has got uh, a splined uh, removal tool and an installation sleeve as well. So making sure those are connected nice and securely. If you go pulling on them, you can actually pull the terminals off of the wire or snap the wire. So make sure you do have that special tool. So removal, we're just gonna use the fork end, gonna place that close and just pull outwards. You should hear a click and then you can just check the end of those. Give them a bit of a clean up. You can maybe put some dielectric grease around this area, not into the actual terminal itself. Uh, that's just gonna stop that water getting in there. Uh, just make sure it's nice and clean. And when it comes to putting that back in, you're gonna use the opposite end of the tool put that on to the wire. And then to put that back in, we're just gonna connect our tool, guide it in, and then just give it a bit of a push. You should hear that a nice audible click, noting that that is back in place. And for removing that main battery to motor lead, it's got a spring loaded collar. So you just need to lift that up and pull up. Uh, and that should just release that from the motor. And replacing it, just line the arrow up with the uh, index mark, push down, and again, make sure that's clipped into place nice and snug. Right, so this is all looking pretty nice and clean in here to me, but yours might not look like this. And sometimes you can get some problems with mud building up around these ports and causing you problems. So I'm gonna do a bit of a clean up with some water displacer and some corrosion protect in there around that area just to stop any potential problems occurring. Then we're gonna lube it all up, clean it up, and put it all back together. Right, so firstly, I'm just gonna get in here with a nice stiff brush. That's just gonna remove all that dust and grime away from these contacts and those connections. Give it a bit of a wipe with a microfiber cloth as well. It's really gonna get 
it nice and shiny in there. So pretty happy with that. I pretty much eat my dinner off of that, I think. Then I'm just gonna get some anti-corrosion spray in here. Just give that a quick spray around the terminals. This leaves a really good coat in. It's gonna stop that water building up around those areas and stop them from rusting out. So let that settle. It all looks pretty good to me. Now it's time to put that motor cover on, knowing that's all protected and there's gonna be no moisture building up in there whatsoever on my next wet ride. So before I put the motor cover on, I'm just gonna spray some water disperser spray into the back of the motor cover. Again, if there was any water to enter the motor area, it just means that it's gonna run off rather than just build up. Again, keeping that water out of the electrical components is definitely key in making sure this motor stays nice and happy. Right, so we're gonna put the motor cover back on. Now these can be a little bit temperamental. Bear in mind, you've got a bit of a lip at the top, so just make sure that is tucked in nice uh, and snugly. Might need to give it a bit of a wiggle to get in place. Looks like it's in there. Then you've got to replace the three little screws that you removed, but these can be quite temperamental. It's very fine thread in there, so just make sure you're not cross-threading those. Right now we're gonna install the left-hand crank back to the motor. Uh, I just wanna mention that you do not want to be using degreaser at all around this motor shaft. If you do need to clean it up, just use uh, a rag and of course just some light uh, cleaner on there just to get rid of any grease or dust or any buildup that there is, such as in this one, it is quite rusty. So I'm gonna clean that up, grease it up before I put it back onto the spine. And also when you do put it onto the spine, just remember there is a master spine that locates into the master key on the crank to make sure you've got that in the correct orientation. Then we're gonna nip the bolts up, preload the cap, and it should be good to go and moving it around to that drive side. Right, so we're just gonna clean this crank up. And of course you have put those cranks nicely together, knowing which side is your left-hand side and your drive side. But if you have got them confused because they do look pretty similar, you usually find that there's gonna be a stamp on the back denoting which is your left hand and your right hand crank. So to clean this up, I'm just gonna spray some of this anti-corrosion agent in here and onto the spindle of the motor as well. Just lightly coat that, don't go too crazy. You just wanna get rid of all the debris and that gunk kind of build up. So get my rag in there, work it round. Right, so we've got the motor shaft nicely lubed up and we've got the crank nice and lubed up too. So it's just a matter of fact, finding that master keyway on the crank and the motor shaft and sliding them onto each other. Right, so the crank arm's in place. Now we're gonna put the preload bolt into the crank. Obviously you want those crank bolts still being nice and loose whilst the preload bolt does its job. So this basically compresses the crank arm onto the shaft itself. I'm just gonna do that till it's snug, then get my torque wrench on there. Just make sure that's cranked up. Once that's done to the correct amount, then I'm just gonna be cranking these uh, other bolts up as well. Now the torque figures on these, on this crank, it is 12 to 14 newton meters. So get your five mil on and crank those up to the right torque. Right now we're on the drive side of the bike. So again, we're just cleaning up both that spider interface and the crank arm. Again, don't get using any degreaser around this area. Just a light lubricant should give you a, a nice clean. Once that on, I'm just gonna grease up the spider itself, slide that on and get the lock ring cranked up nice and tight. That's nicely lubed up. Slot that on. Right, to install the lock ring, remember it's a left-hand thread. It doesn't hurt to put a little bit of grease on here, but not entirely necessary. So I'm just gonna do that up, make sure it doesn't cross thread. And the tension on this is 45 newton meters. So you want that quite nice and snug, just to make sure that spider stays in the right place. So just spin that up, get the tool on there. Right, and once that's snugly in place, you can oppose it with a left-hand crank and then tension it up to 45 newton meters. So we're just gonna repeat that process of the cleanup that we did on that left-hand crank. You might notice that this motor shaft actually has a little hole in. This is if you're using Shimano-style cranks. Uh, on the crank itself, it has a little locking tab. So you basically uh, just loosen it off, flick the locking tab up. It's got a little spike that actually fits down inside this hole to make sure your crank stays on. But with these Husqvarna cranks that I'm using today, we actually haven't got that. So 
if you are wondering what that's for. If you are using those Shimano cranks, just make sure you are using that locking tab to make sure that crank doesn't fall off. A bit of grease going on both these tapers. Then we're gonna install that drive side crank. Just again, make sure you find that master spline. Once that's located, a bit of a wiggle and the crank should go on nice and easy. There we go. So when you put the cranks on, you need to leave the two five mil bolts nice and loose. Firstly, preload it. And then once you're happy with the preload, that's up to the rated figure. Then you tension the crank bolts. If you do it the wrong way around, you're gonna have a loose crank. So once that's all tensioned up, just have a quick whip round it. Just make sure there isn't any excess grease because of course that will pick up dust. Then we're gonna put the chain back onto the bike. Can be a little bit tricky sometimes on those narrow wide chain rings, but that's back on there. Then just install that chain guide, nip that up, and then we should be good to go. Right, so that's all back together. Now I just suggest you turn the motor on and just engage walk mode, see that the motor spins up and it all works as it should. Maybe give it a little road test if you are going out for a ride. But that's it, let us know what motor you would like to see next, given a bit of a spring clean and a little bit of loving. Get involved in the comments, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN.